Hello guys, it's time for a little bit of show and tell. The Makta project is done. Um, it's going into production. This one has been around already for some time now. Um, this was the eighth one that I built. And after this one, I built the ninth one. The ninth one didn't even make it into the sky before I scrapped it. And this is it. This is what's going to go into production. Uh, that's a full mark though. Got the remote, the space for three batteries. I'll talk a little bit about, about the batteries later on and then obviously the drone. This one has had many improvements, many iterations. Uh, it's currently fitted with a closed camera. Remember, there's many camera options available. So I made it that the head is, or the lower jaw part of the head is interchangeable and can be adapted for just about any camera. Uh, this one is closed, so it can be fully waterproof. Um, I made it as foolproof as possible, as simple as possible, with as much technology in it as possible. There isn't a drone that packs this much power in such a small package available on the market. Um, ESCs are inside it, their own little compartment here that is cooled with the external heat plate. Uh, this one has got a release on it, a uh, little empty bay there for connectors. Here's our arm clip. Simple as that. That's it. That's the drone. Uh, this one I have now added air vents. So those are the air intakes for the battery compartment only. And obviously the air outlets are here. And it can take massive batteries. This is a 17.5 amp hour uh, 48 volt battery. Uh, in other words, 840 amp hour. Slide in, and if you want to power it on, you power the button, and that's it. There we go. There it's powering on now. Okay, as simple as it can be. Power switch is at the bottom here. There we go. Power off, and battery out. This thing is in a league of its own. It's full carbon fiber. Um, the arms and stuff, it's made in the same, or will be made in the same fashion as high quality um, bicycles, carbon fiber bicycles, using silicon, silicon inner bladders inside high pressure, high temperature molds. back arms clip in position so they actually hold the arms all locked in. Uh, back one first. There we go. All right so that's that's the motto. This thing it all goes about the battery. That is why it is the size it is. So let's talk a little bit about the battery. multiple batteries available. The original ones was success and I powered them by with a 16,000 tattoo battery like this that simply slides in and plugs in on, on its own. That was for SN8. Then because I don't like the XT90 or the XT type plugs it's not a durable plug it's not a plug that's uh, made to plug in and out in and out um, and have reliable connection all the time. So I switched to proper blade connectors like this. That's the side of a drone, and that's the side of a battery. Oops, can only go in one way. It's they, this is a 120 amp uh, connector, uh, which is more than sufficient because at 46 amp, this drone can fly with a 10 kilogram load. So, uh, and that's just because of the voltage. The voltage is so high. Um, the, 
battery of choice will be this one. It's made up of either of these two cells. Uh, the red one is a 3500 milliamp hour cell, um, of which I then put five in parallel and 14 in series, giving you 70 cells. So this is quite a heavy pack. Um, it is 25% bigger than the nearest competitor in the market. And that 25% not just goes to capacity, but it goes to amperage, to power delivery. Um, they all have four of these cells in series, oh, in parallel, four, four cells in parallel. I've added the fifth one because I want this drone to carry decent load without any hassles. So this pack itself is designed as a 50 amp pack, 17,500 milliamp hour at 48 volt, 14S. Uh, like I said, it's got its own built-in BMS. It's a full BMS that balances all the cells. There's also a power circuit that switches it on and off. So you can have a battery inside the, the drone plugged in, but powered off. Uh, in other words, you can have three batteries in this case, carry case with the drone on its own. Uh, the battery itself is fully ventilated. That both air intakes, that actually goes in here. And because the batteries are spaced apart, there's air, the air channels through the center of the battery and out the back here. It blows through like nothing. So that's the cool this battery. Uh, the cooler the battery, the better the performance, the longer it lasts. Uh, here's what the little frame looks like before the cells are put into it. Um, there's still, of course, the PC board and so on. Everything is still missing out of this, but this is the battery frame that holds them all in place. Uh, like I said, this is 17,500 amp, uh, milliamp hours um, at a 50 amp pack. Can reduce the amperage uh, of the milliamps down to 14,000 uh, milliamp hours um, with these uh, cells that are of uh, 2,800 milliamp hours, but they can deliver a hell of a lot more power. So this can go 75 amps, no problem, in the pack itself. So if you really want to carry even a heavier load, then you'll switch to this kind of um, cells. Uh, and just by the way, the Tesla Model S is powered by these kind of cells, these exact kind of cells. They just put a hell of a lot more. They put a thousand of them in a car. But that's how you get the power. Put enough in parallel and there you go. Um, obviously that's not a cheap pack. Uh, a pack like that is, is over a thousand dollars retail. But you can use LiPo. So he has two 10,000 LiPos. Um, just by the way, this can get flight times of over 80 minutes on this one. Uh, on a, a LiPo pack like this, which is a 10,000 um, milliamp hour 40 uh, 44 volt back so it's two 6s 10,000s that are in series here same story it's got its own built-in BMS here so you simply plug it in and it will charge itself that's it done there's no extra wires there's no extra plugs nothing so from a cha the charger side is like that and it plugs in and there you go and no extra balance leads or anything like that is needed uh, because it's all built in on the pack itself and this is a significantly cheaper battery and it's more readily available so it's got two tattoo 10,000s in here and this will still give you a 44 minute flight time uh, without load which is plenty good enough for most people uh, it's only the guys that want to fly even longer that will go for these more expensive uh, and also heavier batteries right so remember these batteries are heavier and the more mass you put in the air, the more power you need to keep it there. So there's a, there's a trade-off. Um, any case, guys, this is just a little show and tell. Uh, I don't want to talk too much about it. Uh, as you can see, this is, there's nothing like it. Nothing, nothing, nothing like it. Battery slides in, clips closed, arm stuff in place, done. And obviously you fold the props open. These are 22 inch props. Uh, it's a good setup.
balanced motors, everything is right. Uh, you can have variable legs, longer legs, shorter legs, uh, four legs with the extra tube plugging in there, or just like this, it lands pretty stable as it is here. Uh, I prefer to fly it like it is here. Um, I only flew it with those legs right at the beginning, and then I, I stopped using it. So there you go. Nothing like it. Uh, it is for many markets, from uh, mapping to security to military to anything you want, this drone can do. Nothing like it. Uh, the remote itself, let's park it back in this box. This is the Yearlink remote. It's good for 20 kilometers line of sight. So if you've got a clear line of sight, you'll get up to 20 kilometers. Then you have to add the two additional external antennas here, for which there is space. But for most guys, it's more than sufficient as it is with the internal antennas that is not under carbon fiber. They are under glass fiber. All right, just a little show and tell. It's been a hell of a job to get it to this stage. 